Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to investigate the history of speakers. From the very first speaker to the end of the 1920s. I had always assumed that the invention of speakers started with the speaker horn in the early 1920s. It was a bad assumption. The speaker was invented much earlier in 1861. The man who invented this first speaker was Johann Philipp Rees, a German scientist and inventor who was born in the city of Gelnhausen back in 1834. Rees had built a working telephone in 1860, 14 years before Alexander Graham Bell did. Bell is the creator of the first practical telephone. Rees's phone produced a weak and difficult to hear sound, so Rees invented a speaker to attach to his phone that amplified the sound. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell invented the first electric speaker. In 1877, Werner von Siemens invented the first electrodynamic speaker. Building on Alexander Graham Bell's work, von Siemens' electrodynamic speaker was a failure, but it laid the groundwork for further advancements in speaker development. On April 27, 1898, Sir Oliver Joseph Lodge received a patent for a moving coil transducer, which we now call a speaker. Lodge referred to his invention as a bellowing telephone. Today, these speakers are called dynamic loudspeakers. The speaker didn't reach their full potential until the invention of the vacuum tube, which strengthened the signal to the speaker, giving it much more volume. In 1908, Anton Polak patented an improvement to the dynamic speaker with the voice coil centering spider. Edward Preetham and Peter Jensen would come out with the Magnavox speaker in 1915. That same year, Harold Arnold at Bell Lab started up a program to improve sound recording. After World War I, a man who worked under Arnold named J.P. Maxfield, working at Western Electric, would lead an effort to produce a better speaker. That project led to E.C. Wentz moving coil speaker in 1925. Early 1920s radios would use a speaker horn to amplify audio output so that groups of people could listen to radio without headphones. In 1918, Henry Egerton of Bell Labs patented a balanced armature loudspeaker. His invention would lead to the Western Electric Model 540 cone speaker in 1924. Later that year, cone speakers with improved overall sound were developed for radios and they continued production until 1928. Edwin Washburn Kellogg and Chester W. Rice are thought by many to have invented the moving coil loudspeaker in 1925 while working at General Electric. Their idea was actually built on Werner von Siemens' work from 1874. In 1926, Phytophone sound system for movies began using a new speaker developed at Western Electric. The speaker had a one-inch throat and a 40-square-foot mouth. The powerful speaker was designed for movie theaters. Another advancement in speaker technology occurred in 1928 when a Swiss man named Hermann Joseph Fanger invented the coaxial speaker. The center of the cone was light and stiff to accommodate high frequencies while the outer cone was flexible and highly damped to accommodate the lower frequencies. 1929 brought about another advancement in speaker design. Edwin Washburn Kellogg, working at Bell Labs, built the first working electrostatic speaker. The diaphragm was made of a pig's intestine and covered with gold leaf to conduct the audio signal. By 1929, most radios were electric and were paired with electromagnetic dynamic speakers, a huge improvement in sound over both the speaker horn and cone speakers. One more momentous occasion in the history of speakers occurred before the end of the Roaring Twenties. At the time, no one knew how much this event would change the history of speaker development. The event was the birth of a child in Philadelphia, who years later would revolutionize the design of speakers. His name was Amara Bose. Beginning in 1968, Bose would change the speaker industry forever with his line of Bose speakers. In the almost a century since Kellogg's work in 1929, there have been many, many amazing advancements in speaker technology. Some names from the distant past are still remembered today by the sound industry. Jensen is one example. Although the company Peter Jensen founded in 1927 ceased production in the late 1960s, his name is still revered today. 
From the more recent past, another name not only survives but thrives in the speaker manufacturing industry today. That name is Bose. The company Amar Bose, founded in 1964, is still a world leader in sound technology. The company's sales are healthy $3 billion a year. Today, tiny speakers can fill a huge room with near-perfect sound. For people who appreciate music, their ears have never had it better. Well, that's it for this video. There'll be more to come as we continue to investigate the early history of the world's first true mass medium, radio. Thanks for watching.